It seems the trauma of sending him to get multiple movies and having to face death dozens of times has left him in a catatonic state. I spent four years sending him for those films, and the last few months keeping him locked away because he is pure evil now. Still, I get the feeling I may be slightly responsible. Hello. What? So what happens is every time someone eats a dog in this town, you call me? Whatever. If I find him, I'll shoot him up with Thorazine, alright? Right now then. Halloween is a 1978 slasher film directed by John Carpenter and starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, Nancy Loomis, PJ Souls, Charles Cyphers, Kyle Richards, Brian Andrews, John Michael Graham, Nancy Stevens, and Nick Castle. The film opens with some peeping, a one-pump chump, grabbing a weapon, and murder! Michael? Maybe it's because Michael didn't get to go trick-or-treating because, you know, his parents weren't home and his sister was pumping the neighborhood. It's 15 years later and Dr. Sam Loomis is heading to Smith's Grove to take Michael to his hearing. What do I give him when we take him in front of the judge? Sarazine. He'll barely be able to sit up. That's the idea. Sometimes, I wish I could barely stand up. They bicker a bit and, oh... Loomis goes to check and holy shit's Batman! <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here! Yes, I'm okay. He's gone. He's gone from here. The evil is gone. That was pretty melodramatic. It's Haddonfield on Halloween, and that garage door has always bothered me. Lori goes to drop off the keys for the old Myers place, running into Tommy, who she will be babysitting that night. What the fuck is with the parents just vanishing on Halloween night in this town? She drops off the keys and the people coming by at 10.30 are sure going to get a surprise. Lonnie Edelson, that's a haunted house. He said awful stuff happened there once. Lonnie Lamb probably won't get out of the sixth grade. Wouldn't it be funny if in Halloween Kills, Lonnie is still in the sixth grade? Every breath you take. Sam Haddonfield is 150 miles away from here. Now, now for God's sakes, he can't drive a car. He was doing very well last night. Maybe someone around here gave him lessons. Dick. Here's some boredom in class. Hello, is it me you're looking for? The boogeyman is coming. Leave me alone. Boogeyman, 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 boogeyman. boogeyman. 
and here he is! Well, this is a little creepy. No Illinois high school would have lockers outside like this. Three new cheers to learn in the morning. The game is in the afternoon. I have to get my hair done at five, and the dance is at eight. I'll be totally wiped out. I don't think you have enough to do tomorrow. Totally. Totally. Hey, jerk! Speed kills! Road rage! You know, Annie, someday you're gonna get us all into deep trouble. How about tonight? Oh shit, she saw me. And he's gone. Poor Lori. Scared another one away. You can tell they're best friends because they tend to treat each other like shit. <laughs> Excuse me, Lori. Oh, Mr. Brackett, I'm sorry, Mr. Brackett. Oh. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? What kind of sheriff does this? And who trick-or-treats at 4 o'clock? These sheets smell so fresh. There's a phone call that may be obscene, but it turns out to just be Annie and her chewing. So they go out and get high! Why is Loomis going to the cemetery? Who's Gregson? Oh, I know. Judith Myers. She came home. Did he have a truck with a lift? Annie and Lori continue to smoke the marijuana and have a tail. They run into Dad who is checking out break-in in a hardware store. Did it close at 3 o'clock? Then Loomis shows up. Look behind you! There's a discussion about Ben Tramer and then they go to their jobs for the night. Loomis and Brackett head to the Myers house and discover Michael's dinner. Could have been a skunk. Could have. A man wouldn't do that. This isn't a man. They do a walk around. Johnny on the lawn. He could have seen inside. Holy shit! Then Loomis delivers some exposition. I spent eight years trying to reach him, and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. And Loomis is going to chill at the Myers house waiting for him to return. No fucks given. I'm a looking and I'm a liking. Whoops! Annie is a fucking slob and needs to wash her clothes, getting stuck in the laundry room as Paul calls. And no one in Illinois would have a laundry facility like that. I'm not marching my ass through 10 inches of snow and sub-zero temperatures to do my fucking wash. And he takes the call full of sexual innuendo and proceeds to dump Lindsay onto Lori so she can go get the high hard one. She forgets the keys, goes back to get them. Well, that was locked, and this is really foggy. <laughs> Always check the back seat. I guess she's pretty horny. Tommy makes a prank attempt, but oh shit. And he has a freak out. All right, I'll stay with you tonight. Just in the chance that you're right. And if you are right, damn you for letting him go. He didn't. He wanted to dope his ass up and lock him away forever. Outside the Wallaces. Okay, first I rip your clothes off. I don't rip my blouse. It's expensive, idiot. Then you rip my clothes off. Then we rip Lindsay's clothes off. Yeah, I think I got it. What the fuck? Subtle, aren't they? Avert your eyes, you perv. They learn from Lori that the house is free and they proceed to get it on. Bob runs downstairs for a post-coital beer and ends up hanging out. Trick or treat! See anything you like? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Linda makes a call to Lori, but the line ends up being dead. You've been staying there all night and you just now noticed the car. Lori goes over to the Wallaces to investigate, and the hell? And it's time for the obligatory corpse discovery. I fucking love that reveal. <laughs> Damn! The interior kitchen door has a lock? Lori gets outside and runs to the neighbors. Oh, oh. Hello, help me! Here, please help me! Please! Can't you hear me? Oh, God! What 
bunch of dicks! She runs to the Doyles and wakes up Tommy to let her in. Who is it? Tommy, open up, it's me! Yeah, okay. <laughs> Once inside, she notices the window is open and stick! I took a knitting needle to the foot once and it sucks. Loomis wanders as Lori talks to the kids and hi there. Sure, that'll stop him. Oh shit, right in the eye. Lori has the kids pound sand and oh shit. Huh, this may be the place. Michael gets a mess and... He dead? Oh hell, just empty the thing into him. What's the boogeyman? Uh, maybe. Oh shit. There were slashers before Halloween, but this is the film that really kicked the genre into overdrive and gave us a decade of some classics and a lot of crap. One of the big changes with this film is that Instead of our hapless victims walking into terror, terror comes to them. I mean, they're just babysitting like a regular night. This is John Carpenter and Deborah Hill's calling card, leading to a decade of genre-bending films that are pretty much unforgettable. Jamie Lee Curtis's star is beginning to rise, and Donald Pleasance would be the rock of this franchise until the mid-1990s. Often imitated but never duplicated, Halloween is an unmatched masterpiece of a film. Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there.